Selling Boats Faster. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Waterline Boats in Seattle, Washington. My name is Chris Helvey, and I'm here to show you a very unique and wonderful 42 foot on deck catch designed by Colin Archer and built in Switzerland by Rolf Way in 1995. She's a ferro cement hull built with remarkable durability and has proven this fact with logging over 80,000 nautical miles around the globe. Her overall length is about 47 feet with the waterline length at, at just under 40 feet. Beam is just a hair over 14. Her owners are on their 20th year living aboard and sailing to more places around the world that could possibly be mentioned here. They've decided to settle back onto land again, so this capable sailboat is ready for the next owners to take up where they are leaving off. She is, of course, a catch rig and comes with a variety of sails. The rigging is ready for open ocean sailing to just about anywhere. The two lower shrouds, two forestays and bobstay, were replaced in 2008. At that time, a piece of the existing rigging was brake tested and found to be stronger than new specifications. So she's ready to go. We'll go on a tour around the deck, starting aft. We can see the wind vane steering and a hatch for access to the lazarette. Speaking of the deck, the entire deck is naturally weathered teak and reportedly has no leaks at all. Under the mizzen boom are hard white covers for the six-person life raft and 240-volt gen set. A large hatch allows light to pour in below. Moving forward on the port side, we come to another light well next to the large center cockpit with a steering wheel. Note the rigid spray dodger here. The center cockpit has a sturdy looking hardcover dodger with 8mm tempered glass on three sides to keep you out of the weather. Walking around on deck gives me the feeling of a tremendously solid vessel. Looking aft, we can see the heavy running rigging for the main boom and the aft deck area. All the windows in this boat are very heavy tempered glass. The Dodger windows are reported to be 8 millimeters and the porthole glass 15 millimeters. Other glass is 10 mil. Heading forward on the port side, the high railings provide safety and all the stanchion bases appear to be strong. Moving to the bow area, we see another large hatch. As you will soon see, these allow for a very well lit living area below deck. The boat has two anchors and a 2000 watt Lumar windlass. The sail covers appear all to be in good condition. From here, we'll look aft and you can see all the hatch locations. A solar panel helps to keep the 200 amp hour batteries topped off. Looking aft down the starboard side, it is somewhat a mirror of the port side. The masts are anodized aluminum at roughly 50 feet in height for the main and 42 feet for the mizzen. A chimney for the aft cabin heating exists here. Finally, we return from where we started. Now let's take a trip to the interior. Entering amidships under the spray dodger through the companionway, we enter into a spectacular interior. I was immediately impressed with the fit and finish, reflecting the work of a talented craftsman. Nearly everything is finished hardwood, which feels very warm yet spacious. Directly to port, Next to the companionway steps is a navigation table and settee. As we go through the interior, note the copious amount of storage in the ways of drawers and lockers. Entering through a doorway is the forward cabin. There are two single berths here, a workbench with a vise, and the anchor locker is accessed from the two lower cabinet doors beneath the vise. Again, storage is abundant with 14 drawers and two cabinets just on the port side here. The woodworking skill is evident everywhere you look. Heading back out and aft, 
The navigation station is there and we can continue down the hall where the galley is along the port side. An overhead hatch is directly above the kerosene cooker and manual pump basin. This sink has both fresh and seawater pumps. A full-length towel rack runs along the other side of the hallway. Further aft, we enter into the saloon area with a large dining table and wood-burning stove. Again, a well-placed overhead hatch is directly over the table for ample lighting. You can see a sizable bookshelf fully aft. This is a single berth on the port side. A privacy curtain separates this cabin from the rest of the boat. We'll head back forward past the galley and past the large pantry door to port. You can find full format photos of this boat from our inventory page at waterlineboats.com. The head is across the hall. A quick look around reveals the fine craftsmanship evident throughout the boat. It has a basin, a manual toilet, and a drain for a shower with a separate holding tank for this shower's gray water. However, the shower needs to be hooked up. Heading out the head and over to the starboard side of the boat, we enter into the main cabin. Right away, you see the many drawers for storage and the big hatch above where light floods in. A double berth here is directly over the engine and pulling up the cushions allows access to it along with the batteries. There is currently room to expand the battery bank to double the amperage. An electrics panel is here along with a few key gauges. This is a good place to notice the ribbon grain in the woodwork. To me, it's very beautiful. A total of 15 drawers plus hanging lockers provide ample storage. Looking at the engine underneath this double berth is very likely the cleanest used engine I have ever seen. It's a Ford Lehman 90 horse diesel, and although it has just over 5,000 hours, it appears to have been meticulously maintained. It is reported to run very well. Additionally, the bilge is incredibly clean. I invite you to come see this unique vessel in person. I can be reached at 575-224-2282 or by emailing chris at waterlineboats.com. Thanks a lot for stopping by and have a good day.